hey, here are some things to think about in your transition from your master's to your PhD. Basically, things that you should think about in your first year of your PhD. So I'm going to start from the point where you have already selected your advisor and the host lab. Good job. You got in. You're in the lab of your dreams. Now, what should you be thinking about? So first of all, you should realize that once you're a PhD student, two major things have changed compared to your academic experience thus far. The most important one is now there is a much greater expectation for you to do, to do independent work and analysis, as was the case, for example, during your master's. So there is the, the expectation that you do that re, um, research, also the background, that, that you do all the checks and that you think independently about uh, this particular problem that you're working on. That can mean many things, for example, that you realize that you have to acquire certain skills in order to tackle this problem and so on and so forth. I mean, it doesn't mean you're alone. I mean, there's always going to be a cohort of people in the lab that will support you and your mentor, of course, or your advisory team. But in the end, it's up to you. There is a, an expectation for you to um, be on your way as an independent researcher from the very beginning. The second thing that has changed is now you really need to collect novel results, however that is defined in discussion with your mentor. It's no longer enough to just try, as it might have been for your bachelor thesis or your master's thesis, because there's um, much more limited in time. Everybody understands you cannot repeat things if things did not work out. Well, this does not work anymore now for your PhD. There is the expectation that you basically produce something novel, so things need to work in the end which means also if something failed, you need to repeat it. Also, and this is something that I struggled a lot with, this is a lot longer time period than projects that you have previously done because it's usually three, four, in some countries also five years. And often there is not much structure. So there's also not this um, sort of immediate feedback that you get very often. You have to work on something for quite a period of time. That can be um, quite challenging to deal with, at least it was for me. So what are the points that you should be focusing on then in, in your first year? I can think of seven things that I would advise people to pay particularly uh, attention to. The first thing is learn the culture of that lab. Um, sometimes that culture is spelled out in a written document. We've just tried to do that basically to lay out how this lab works, what we expect and um, how you can contribute to it. That includes many, many little things, you know, your expectations for contributions to lab meetings, also the interaction with the PI, the expectation for you to collaborate or whatever it may be. Sometimes you just have to absorb it by <laughs> observing what's going on in that lab and by contributing to it or there is a written document. Either way, I think it's very important that you get incorporated into this lab as, as well as you can. And so that means absorbing that lab's culture. The second point is read critically and write. So, of course, everybody will tell you to um, read the literature. This is self-evident. I think you cannot produce something new without knowing what's already there and therefore discovering what the gaps are. And you should avoid doing things that have already been done. So I guess reading and knowing the literature well is a given. And of course, it's going to be a major task during your first year of your PhD. But then this will continue on the entire time. And of course, it's important to read critically, not just read and accept, but to also uh, read critically, meaning, well, have they done these controls? Have they considered this point? Where, um, have, where has the study not been performed well? This is, of course, very difficult, uh, but it's, um, it's a skill that you need to hone during your first year. But you need to also write. And this is what um, many people do don't take very seriously in the beginning because it's all about this um, processing of information that you take in. I think it's very important from the very beginning to also write, produce text, like collect your thoughts, uh, reformulate what you have uh, written, what you have, uh, what you have read in certain papers and just produce text, have a document open where, for example, you take notes, uh, what you could mention in the introduction section, what you could um, mention in the discussion section. Do not wait until you have your first results. This is the most common mistake uh, that you don't always, from the very beginning, start writing. So I think the, the most important advice is start writing immediately from the very beginning. 
Of course, you cannot write about results, but not all writing is about results. There's also the introduction section, there's the discussion section, and there's concepts that you can develop. You can write without having results, without any doubt, and you should do it. And you should also do it in English. Don't take notes and don't process information in writing in your own language if it's not English. From the very beginning, uh, shift everything over to English. The third point is get familiar with tools and methods. I mean, it's also fairly obvious. If you realize that for your project, you need a certain method or tool that's not very well developed in your lab, then of course in discussions with your PI or mentor, go where that has already been established. Don't reinvent the wheel. I mean, you can, you can spin and waste a lot of time by trying to establish a method that's already running in some other lab. Very often it's, it's, it's easy to go to other labs and, and, and learn a method there. Just stay for a month or something and it saves you an enormous amount of time. So check which of the methods that you need are available in your lab. And this is typically most of them. Otherwise, why are you in that lab? Um, but sometimes there are some other things that you really need, some analytical methods or statistical methods or whatever it is where the expertise is not available locally right in that lab. And maybe it's in another lab in the same department or it's another university somewhere else. Either way, then you should access that information rather than trying to figure it out on your own because it will just be less time efficient. The fourth point is establish your network. I mean, obviously this is super important because your network can come in handy at so many points in your voyage towards um, the goal of obtaining a PhD and also beyond that. Uh, so you should always work a little bit on your network. What I mean, a network is just making basically acquaintances and, and friends in, in, in the realm of your area of science. And that means in your lab, um, establish a network of people that, you know, it can be as simple as I will help you with your harvest, you will then help me with your harvest, or let's learn this method together, or whatever it is that you need to do. Establish this network of interactions within the lab, within your department, the cohort of PhD students of which you are part at your university. But also, and this is admittedly a bit difficult in the beginning, uh, before you've gone to your first conference, for example, but already at least try to establish your network by, for example, following people on Twitter or whatever your social media of choice is, or um, you know, creating a little mental map of who does what in this general area of science. So have like this network sort of um, building activity going on at all times. I think it's quite important that you know this uh, general layout of the land, if you will, in your particular area of science. You know who the players are, Maybe you can establish a little bit of contact with them already, but definitely focus on your local network in your um, lab and department. The fifth point, and this is something at which I colossally failed as a PhD student, is get your hands dirty in the lab. Do something. Do some experiments in the lab, little experiments. Don't set up this monumental, mind-blowing, huge experimental setup with um, thousands of experimental units. Don't do that. Do set up like little things. Just try, try things out in the lab. But do go in the lab and set something up if you work in an experimental field, of course. Um, because what I did is I... <laughs> I was like overthinking all of these um, various options I had for my PhD. I wanted to design the perfect experiment, which I learned only years later cannot possibly exist. So I was just spinning my wheels. I mean, it wasn't completely lost time because I well, learned to write proposals and also um, had a lot of the literature um, read by that point. But in the end, I would have been much better off and would have, I would have started feeling much better about myself if I had gone to the lab very early on and just do a little study and get some results, have these results like tell you a little story, think about it first. It's, it's so important. So I think this is the, one of the most important things you can do is like don't get stalled in thinking and rethinking what you can do. I'm not saying thinking is not important. Of course it is. You shouldn't be setting up something utterly stupid, of course. Um, but then, you know, at some point, just do something. Set up a little study. You realize, oh, I guess I've got to think about 
how I do this more um, or pay more attention to how I dissolve my reagents or how I handle my soil, how I fill it in parts and I need to standardize it better. Whatever it is, there's a myriad of things to think about when you set up experiments. Actually, one of the best things that you can probably do is tag along with somebody who is a lot more experienced and help them set up with their um, one of their experiments. But do go in the lab and do something and set something up. I think you will already feel better about yourself when you have achieved something um, like a little result in the lab, guaranteed. The sixth point is be prepared for self-doubt. I mean, you are smart. You... Um, had good grades, you made it into graduate school, you were accepted in your favorite lab. So I think this is all fantastic. But you got to realize this PhD thing is hard. It's, um, it's a very difficult thing to you know, go through these three or four years of um, research and do something that hasn't been done before. It's of course also extremely exciting, but it is also difficult. You're going for the highest academic degree there is, the PhD. And so you're going on quite a journey. And so you should be prepared that at some point you will just have self-doubt. I think it's completely normal. I think if you don't have that, um, that would be very unusual, let's say. I think so everybody goes through these phases of self-doubt. Am I smart enough for this? Um, am I really cut out for this kind of stuff? I think those thoughts, I had these thoughts obviously massively, um, especially in my first two years of my PhD, got better after that. But I think everybody at some point has this phase. So be prepared for this phase. It may come early, it may hit you later. Just uh, be prepared for that. And that means also don't be shy about uh, seeking out help. Uh, when you have um, mental health issues, for example. Um, now, at, um, I would say at most uh, universities or maybe all universities, you have some contact opportunities for people to go and uh, seek help. Don't underestimate it. I mean, it can, be, it can be quite a crisis when you've made it through all these successes and there is the initial euphoria of starting a PhD and then you're realizing, oh, this did not work out and I, I didn't quite get that and oh, I look others are doing much better. This, this is what happened to me and uh, well, don't underestimate that as a challenge to overcome. It's a long journey, so it's important that you seek the help that you get and communication is super important. So of course, talk to your mentor, advisor and also, also your colleagues, of course, um, your cohort of PhD students. Yeah, remember that you're not alone in this and um, you can always ask others for help. Don't be too proud and don't wait until it's maybe too late. And then the seventh point, do take care of yourself. Stay healthy, eat healthy, <laughs> um, exercise, um, uh, meet with friends outside of work if possible and don't let that uh, PhD endeavor completely and utterly consume yourself as a person. I think it's also important to have this, this work-life balance. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to get carried away with the science and you are excited about it. And I think this is good. It's necessary. I think you should be excited about it. It's, it's uh, fantastic. Uh, but don't neglect the rest of you, basically, in this entire endeavor. So keep these um, seven points in mind. There's also many other pieces of advice out there on the internet and on, on YouTube about this, but those are some from my experience um, as a PhD student, also from seeing many PhD students in the course of my academic career so far in the lab. And I think those are the, the points that I would tell everybody to take quite seriously. So good luck with your first year.